Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and it's my joy to visit with you again. Today, as we uh, begin our time together, I'd like to ask your prayers again for my sister, Terry, who is in the hospital at the moment. Just would ask that you would keep Terry and her husband, Bill, in your prayers um, as uh, she deals with some complications um, and uh, know that she's getting the best of care, but uh, heavy on all my mind and heart. Um, Today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a recent conversation I had with some other pastors and how it got me thinking about some things. Um, our meeting that we had, um, we we're really happy to see the pandemic restrictions uh, being eased. And, uh, you know, folks are saying in one form or another, they just can't wait to get back to, you know, for things to get back to normal. And, you know, I, I completely understand that sentiment. We really have enjoyed and longed to be with friends and family uh, that we weren't able to see uh, as much uh, and so glad that we can do that again. We're really excited. Uh, folks are actually taking real vacations rather than a staycation. Um, and just returning, uh, I think when they say, you know, getting things back to normal, just returning to a much less stressful time, just kind of like it used to be. And, you know, in some ways that's happening. It's hope happening more at home, at work, and in the community, and even here at church. Uh, we're glad for some things that are getting back to normal. But we also talked a little bit longer and recognized that there's another sense that things are never going to be the way they were. Things aren't going to go back to the way it was. You know, as we move forward, as I talk to some of you, um, there are going to be some folks that are going to be working from home for uh, in an indefinite period. Certainly, I think Zoom meetings are here to stay. They're a very effective way, a uh, very efficient way of using our time and cutting down on travel. And um, certainly, um, the impact of the pandemic is going to continue to see us adapt in a variety of ways. So while there's a sense that we want to go back back the way it was, there's also a sense that there's a new new normal. Uh, and as we're moving forward, things are going to be different than what they were before. It made me think of the words from Isaiah 43, 19, um, reading from the message. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I hear these next words. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert, rivers in the badlands. Isaiah was telling Israel as God's chosen people, God will restore you as his witness before the world. Watch, I'm going to do a new thing. Well, my friends, I think churches across America and around the globe have a tremendous opportunity at hand right now. For I believe God is going to do a new thing. We must not leave our focus in the rear view mirror, lamenting for the good old days. Rather, prayerfully, courageously, we need to ask God to guide us forward as he what? Does a new thing. How might that um, be lived out? Well, I think worship is going to continue to be a hybrid model with some folks that are attending in person and other folks that are, are going to continue to worship online. I, I think how we uh, welcome them that are online, connect and integrate those uh, worshiping with us in that way uh, are important uh, ways that we will adapt as a church. I believe Zoom has proven to be an effective tool that will allow us more effectively to do the business of the church online without having to ask folks to travel or gather in a particular place. I believe Zoom also has even more possibilities that need to be extended so that we can develop and build an online presence for Bible studies, seminars, and prayer groups that will even further enhance our ministry to the community. And I believe that we need to find new ministries that speak to the present needs within our community. And I think we need to go to where the people are rather than waiting for them to come to us. The business world has shown us that organizations that have remained fluid, adapted quickly, and made changes in their business model continue to thrive. And so I think it becomes our prayer as a church 
that we would be saying, God, what new thing do you desire to do through us? As we pray this, I believe the church can and will thrive as we combine new ministries and new ways of doing things with those that already exist. So I hope that this short devotional will get you thinking as individuals and as a congregation, that we will put ourselves in a frame of mind that we're open and enthusiastic about the new things that are coming our way. For me personally, I'm excited to see God's spirit move as he does a new thing. Amen. Well, you know, I don't usually have so many announcements, but today it seems like there's quite a few things to share with you. So um, just a reminder, um, when the weather permits, uh, we'll continue to meet uh, in our, for our in-person service outdoors, um, right behind the multi-purpose room. Um, remind you to bring a chair. And folks are using it. It seems to be working well. We've added this year the option of staying in your car and listening to the service on your FM dial at 93.1. So those are some new ways that we're doing some things and um, weather permitting, uh, we can get kind of into a, a flow with that. Um, but if the weather does force us back inside, we'll meet, can, we will meet upstairs in the sanctuary. We are collecting wish, li wish list items for Mission Central and also Join Hands uh, Ministries. And a complete list of the items that are needed are posted online and are also um, in the bulletin. And uh, you, you can find collection boxes in the NPR. The last day to donate to those two things are July 25th. We're really excited. We're just weeks away from Bible school on July 18th through the 22nd. It's going to be in the evening from 6 to 8 p.m. And please, if you haven't yet, register your children ages 3 through 12. Um, and you can do that on our church website at www.wesleyum.org. Certainly, all children are welcome and want to have them experience this special time together. Um, we no longer have our community aid collection bin, but you can continue to support Wesley Outreach through community aid by taking your donation to any store and sharing the name of the church and our partner number 10368. Also on July 10th, we will have a community aid collection day right here at church between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. You can bring clothing and shoe donations. Uh, we will gather them together and then uh, deliver them for you to Community Aid. And that's just, again, on July 10th between 9 and 1. And uh, uh, one other thought, we're looking for some ministry partners to visit the Schaffner Detention Center. Um, that's a once-a-month uh, activity. And when we go there, we provide a Bible lesson and discussion time for these youth please contact Amy Whitworth to volunteer or to have uh, more information about that particular ministry. Well, again, thank you for visiting with me, and let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, like Israel, we pray that you will help us to be an expectant people as you do a new thing in our midst. Help us not so much to want to go back to the way the things were, but to earnestly seek to adapt and move forward as you lead us. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, my friends, thank you for visiting with me. We're going to do this again soon. May the peace of God be with you, and will you please stay strong and stay safe.